Hello, this is Eric here with Rob Overholt. Start Good Things. We're so glad you're with us today. And joining us are friends from the Bible Project. John Collins, Tim Mackey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, guys. So a lot of our folks are very interested in starting good things. Uh, tell us about your project and what was the vision behind it? Yeah, the, the vision was to make a library of videos that walk through the the narrative of the Bible from beginning to end and showed how it's one unified story that all leads to Jesus. So we want to do that through um, making videos that show the literary structure of books of the Bible. And then also videos that took one motif or theme in the Bible and trace that all the way through the narrative arc of scripture. And we want this whole library to be uh, freely accessible, beautifully done and really help you just capture the imagination of of the Bible and understand it as a unified story. And so Tim had been, you know, working uh, as a scholar, um, thinking about the Bible this way. And I'd been working as a um, kind of a marketer of sorts, doing explanation videos that, that, that take complicated ideas and boil them down to short uh, animated videos. And mainly for the tech world. And so then we just kind of combined forces about five years ago and thought, let's do this for the Bible and let's, um, let's make it happen. So how, <clears throat> how did that idea germinate between the two of you originally? Like how did that, mm. how did that conversation mm. get started? Well, we, we had known each other from college. Actually, we, we met um, at a Christian college in Portland. And then more specifically, we both were involved in a, outreach ministry to wait 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 so you're skateboarders su you're suggesting there are christians in portland <laughs> yes <laughs> there is yeah i mean it's not a ton but it's <laughs> whatever it's a big We're Austin, so we relate ah uh, got it yeah there you go it's very similar so yes uh yeah so there was a urban outreach ministry to skateboarders actually that was the context where our paths crossed personally mm -hmm. and um so there you go. So we were part of the same circle of friends um, and then just knew each other. The women who became our wives were also friends with each other. So just, it was really relational from going a long way back. And then I went to school for way too long <laughs> and uh, I, I loved every minute of it, but it was way too long. Um, and so that was kind of, I was both teaching and academic and church settings. Um, as I was finishing school and finished my PhD. And so I had just had a ton of content about the Bible, which I found bewildering from the first time I started reading it when I was 20 <laughs> years old. And so um, I just had developed all this stuff to try and help invite people into the Bible because I found it as strange as anybody else did, and, but also wonderful and compelling. So John knew about some of the work I'd been doing. We had touch base over the years kept in touch so he originally pitched the idea to me of using this medium to to start putting the, the work out there yeah so I'm, cur I'm curious do you do you recall even as you first engaged with the bible what it was that was so bewildering like do you remember what those things were that you came across that you were like this is very strange to me yes <laughs> Yes, there's a talking snake on page three. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not normal. You know what I mean? And like I've never seen weird one. demon spawn and floods. And, you know, that's just the first 10 pages. And then violence, sacrifice, the whole deal. But uh, so actually, here's what's really important, though, is I wasn't, ac I wasn't introduced to the Bible first as a young 20-something and a, a teenager. Through this ministry, I was introduced to Jesus to the stories about him, to his teachings. And he, he was very compelling to me. So compelling that after hearing about him for enough years, I decided to become one of his disciples. And so to me, it's important that it happened in that order. Um, and then I didn't start reading the Bible till I had already for a number of years been hearing and thinking about Jesus. So uh, he was my gateway into the Bible. So even though I was weirded out by the Bible, I was compelled by Jesus and figured he had to be at the center of everything, all this weird stuff. I just don't know how it all works together. Um, 
So in many ways, the bio project, although it's through a medium that John developed and had expertise in, for me, it's just continually working out my own relationship to Jesus through the Bible. And it's that, it's that for John, too. This mm has -hmm. very much been a discovery process, too, for both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think certainly you've created a tool that helps people who do follow Jesus grow in their faith and learn to interact with this ancient text. Uh, I, I imagine you probably also have seen people who were skeptical about God or even the scriptures jump in before any sort of faith. How have you seen mm -hmm. the Bible Project help people discover faith or even grow in their faith? Yeah, well, we hear, we hear a lot of stories. We also don't hear a lot of stories, so we don't, we don't know the full impact. Um, but we hear stories of people who um, definitely were ready to give up on the Bible. I think that's the story we hear the most. And now the Bible's come to life for them. And um, we also hear from, we do hear from people from other faiths who are saying, I just, I just want to know what was in the Bible. And this has really helped me understand that. Mm. Um, it's mm. also something that people who want to share their faith and share the, the story of the Bible with their friends or their relatives or their kids or their parents um, find it something really accessible to mm. do that with. So we hear a lot about that and the, and the conversations that come up after that. Mm -hmm. We like, the, it's a cool medium in that way where you can mm -hmm. just share a five minute video. It's not preachy, it's, it's mm -hmm. disarming, but it's also very informative. And, um, and then it leads to great conversations. So then you have this amazing idea. It actually is a fantastic, you know, result. How did you, build the foundations you needed to grow this nonprofit because in many ways this was just a passion on the side yeah mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. listeners are starting churches or starting businesses or starting nonprofits how did how did you grow it so that in five years you're not only full-time bible project you you have a team mm -hmm. yeah yeah we didn't we didn't expect to grow this big of a, a team and organization but what we did hope to do is finish the the library of like a hundred videos that we had sketched out that mm -hmm. Tim actually outlined. Um, and so the strategy was um, to, to crowdfund the project. So a lot of people are familiar with Kickstarter where you have a vision for a project and then people come in and pitch in to make it come to be a reality. And Kickstarter is great for something where it's like, I have one project and then it's done. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to do like serial ongoing content, Kickstarter is not great for that. There's a new platform right now called Patreon, which is really, it's newer than Kickstarter. <clears throat> and it's built for that. Um, that wasn't around five years ago when we were starting this. But uh, what had happened was um, YouTube was, was getting tired of being just the cat video library on the internet and so they they put out these youtube grants for some creators to really up their game in their content and one of the people that got that grant is this is these brothers called the green brothers who've been youtubing forever and so they got a million dollar grant and they started a channel called crash course um it's youtube.com slash crash course and they have tons of really great educational videos that walk through world history and chemistry and all yeah, sorts of I actually use those to help uh, homeschool my daughter the last couple of years. Yeah, mm. they're great. Yeah, they're incredible. Uh, so they're great communicators. They really use the medium well. Uh, after about a year and a half, they spent the million dollars and they um, had a great, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how, much, how they made so much content for that million dollars, but they did. And then they had hundred probably a couple hundred thousand YouTube subscribers. And so the question was, how do we keep doing this? How do we turn this into something? Not everyone gets a million dollars, by the way, to start <laughs> something. But, um, but now that this is going, how do we keep it going? And do we, do we sell ads? Do we find more grants? What do we do? And so they decided they would go to their YouTube subscriber base and say, hey guys, you like this? Let's keep doing this. Can you pitch in a few bucks? And they um, put a thermometer up on a website. And within like 30 days, they raised... 50 grand in monthly committed support wow. to make these videos. 
So that had already happened and we just studied their model. And um, there was about 10 or 12 or more other YouTube channels that jumped on and done the same thing. And so I was just looking at like, okay, how many views does it take to get a dollar <laughs> in support, um, of monthly support with all of these channels? What's the average? And how many views do I think we can generate with our content? And at what point will we have enough crowd support to, to make this a viable thing? And so just ran some, some numbers and then we found, um, we made the couple pilot videos mm -hmm. kind of on our own time and on our own dime. And then we found some colleagues and friends who would pitch in and give us a little bit more runway so that as we started crowdfunding, we didn't have to like um, be able to, we could, we had time to, to build that subscriber base. Um, and, and then we just built the platform and put it out in the world and it could have, not done anything at that yeah. point, but we were really fortunate that uh, people responded to it, shared it, and started giving to the next videos. And so, um, mm -hmm. as as people gave and as the monthly support grew, we grew the studio and we're able to put out a video every two to three months, and then every two months, and then every six weeks. And now we are able to put a video out every two weeks, mm -hmm. um, and we're doing other content as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, the podcast is fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You who are listening who have not seen it, uh, I think it, the website is join the pro join the Bible project org, and you have a YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's the Bible project com or join the Bible project com, and um, the YouTube channel is YouTube com slash the Bible project. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Well, it's great. One of the things first, I want to thank you guys for what you do. Really, you do it well. It's a brilliant idea, but it's also brilliant execution of the idea, which is something I think for a lot of our listeners, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. enough to just have a great idea. You have to have great execution, mm -hmm. a great idea. And you guys are doing that really well. And for just a generation to be able to share, uh, just, hey, here's, mm -hmm. here's a five-minute video. It's such a great thing in, in, the, in this era for uh, mm -hmm. you know, advancing the gospel. So thanks so much for that. Uh, I, we asked everyone a couple questions, and I'd like to hear from both of you on this one. Uh, one closing question for us, for me, would be if you were on an elevator for 30 seconds, a uh, 30-second ride down the elevator to ground floor with a uh, sort of a budding entrepreneur who wants to do something really good and meaningful, and you could only give them one piece of indispensable advice in that 30 seconds, what, and only 30 seconds, what would that piece of advice be? John, let's start with you. Oh, man. <laughs> um, well, you... Just one piece of advice. <laughs> one. 30 seconds, 30 one seconds. piece of advice. I'm just going to quote you for mine. So. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, good. So I get, I get two. I get two pieces <laughs> of advice. Um, I, I, you just can't overestimate the value of hustle. I mean, I think if I only had one piece of advice, it's just, it's hard work. You got to keep working. Um, people think that once you get a job that you love, it's not work. And that's not true. It's always work. It'll always be work. And to make things happen, you just have to keep hustling. Um, Excellent. So. What about you, Tim? <laughs> um, mine is just something I've heard John say multiple times over the years. And it's about the momentum that uh, your people are more likely to get behind and help generate momentum behind something that is already going and that already exists. Yeah. It's, it's much harder to rein in support and momentum for an idea. And so uh, we took a year to create the first two videos um, and we didn't have the resources, you know, flowing in. So that was a unique season where we put in the resources and effort to make that happen. And, and it bore fruit then. Then we launched it to the public after a year of working on it. So that was a good lesson for me, just that great. principle. Yeah, that was great. That was a great elevator ride. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I love it. I mean, literally to think that you did two videos in a year, and now it's a video every two weeks. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> the power of momentum. Uh, yeah. And, and the power of hustle. And the power of hustle. <laughs> Another question we'd like yeah. to ask, uh, if you've ever been to a baseball game, you notice that the batter comes up with a song. 
you were coming up to bat, what would your song be? Batters come up with songs? Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Is this a new thing? <laughs> I've watched baseball in forever. I've been to one Oakland A's game like 20 years ago. I used ago. to go to the Mariners with my grandpa growing up. Oh, wow. There you go. So what would your theme song be? My Joel? theme song? Oh, yes. Man. Oh. Oh, good. Wow. Wow. I don't do know. you listen to a lot of music? I do. Yeah. But I've converted to the Spotify generation where it's just whatever the no album give you. sticks with me longer than six months and then I'm on to the next one. I mean, you know, I grew up on Star Wars, so the, uh, <laughs> but that feels really presumptuous. I know, right? To say that. <laughs> what would you be the, would be the like, <laughs> the Darth Lord song? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was just thinking the opening credits, the opening, like, but there you go. I, ah, maybe my answer is that I, I can't think of something. Off the top of my head, I don't know what that just says. Tell the announcer to hit Spotify and see what happens. I guess so. Shuffle. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Star Wars. I like that one actually. All right, Star Wars. Cheers. Yeah. What about it you, works. John? Yeah. Uh, boy. Um, I want to think of something really clever that would just disarm everyone and make everyone like laugh. Um, but I'm I'm sure that would get old, um, really quick. Um, for some reason for me the um, I'm just gonna go with an album that uh, like one of my favorite, my probably my favorite album is the Weezer Blue album. And you could play any song on the Weezer Blue album mm. while I come up to bat and I'll feel really good about that. Love it. Excellent. <laughs> hey, well, thank you guys for all you're doing and for taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, yeah thanks. Absolutely. Thanks for Fun talking chatting. to you guys. Thanks guys.